Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games and part 6 of our How to Play Population Z series. I'm Lee and in this video I'll be taking you through all the rules for searching, using the search tables and giving you an overview for the items and cards. Players should agree on which features are searchable items during the battlefield setup. You can include scatter terrain, vehicles, rooms, buildings, tokens, and you can even include NPC models. If using NPC models, they can only be searched when they've lost all their hearts and apples. So place them prone and then remove the model from the battlefield as soon as it has been searched, successfully or not, for the first time. We recommend that you only use NPC survivors for searchable bodies. Searching zombies is just too gross. With everything except the bodies, a survivor may perform as many search actions on that feature until they find something. Buildings will typically hold two to three items that can be searched for, but anything else will only hold one. During a search, survivors may find food, gear and weapons. Each item will show a benefit and or a condition. Gear and weapon items also have a carry slot number. The carry slot number represents the size or weight of the object and tells you how many carry slots it will take up in the backpack. Items can be carried if the survivor has enough carry slots free or they can use them immediately if the survivor has enough actions remaining. Apply the extra bonuses or conditions as soon as the item has been used or when it tells you when to do so on the card. To carry out a search, it'll cost you one action, and to search, the survivor must be in base contact with a searchable feature, and then roll 1d6. If the result equals or beats the survivor's luck characteristic, then that search is successful. If the result is less than the survivor's luck characteristic, then the search is unsuccessful. If successful, you can roll on the search tables. We're going to cover that in a moment and then add that item or condition to the survivor's backpack if they have enough carry slots available. Remove the searched feature from the battlefield or place a token on it so it's clear that it has been searched. If the search was unsuccessful, the survivor fails to find anything, nothing happens and they carry on with their activation. They may search again if they have enough actions remaining. You can also carry out a desperate search and sometimes with time against you, you must find that special item. With a desperate search, add one to the search action roll, but place one noise token in the entry zone. A desperate search will always add one noise token, even if the survivor has already placed a noise token during their activation. When a search is successful, you'll need to carry out four steps to decide what item the survivor finds. So let's have a look at the search tables. First, you're going to roll 2d6. Add the results and consult the table to see which search table you'll gain an item from. This table is on page 41 of the core book. Here you can see we've rolled a six, so we'll consult the gear table. You'll find the tables in the core book, the asset books, and free to download on our website. Next, we're gonna roll one dice, and this will be the first number in the column. Here, it'll be the number four. Then we roll a second dice, that'll be the second number. So here we've got four and two, that means we have found a grappling hook. The survivor finds or gains the item or condition listed next to that result and can use it during their skirmishes. Add the item to the backpack if it has sufficient carry slots available and then use the tables for any characteristics or you can make a note on the notes section or use the printed item cards if you prefer. Each campaign will come with a unique set of legendary items. You can only find one of each legendary item during the whole campaign. So if you find an item that's already been found, just re-roll. You can, however, find multiples of all the other non-legendary items during your skirmishes. You can keep the found items in the survivor's backpack at the end of the skirmish, or you can add them to the group's stash. Any survivors are allowed to take an item from the group stash during the pre-skirmish sequence. 
In Population Z, sharing is caring, and if a survivor wants to give an item to another survivor during a skirmish, the survivor with the item must drop it during their activation, then the other survivor can pick it up during their activation, unless of course an enemy gets there first. All the tables, cards and tokens you'll need to play the game are featured in the core book, the optional asset book for the Huntsville campaign, and we've put PDFs on our website to give you as many options as possible to get hold of the assets you need. Let's look at the different items that you'll find in the tables, starting with knowledge, and survivors will find snippets of information or bonuses in survivor notes or books that can help them in their skirmishes. Then there's the ammo table, and ammo is limited in Population Z, so be careful how you use it. You can find more ammo and top up as you search the battlefield, and there will be times when you really want to land on the ammo table. Here's an example of the ammo card with three ammo rounds. The gear cards contain a variety of items from rubber ducks to suitcases, sunglasses to medic kits. Then you've got the food cards, and these are crucial for keeping your apples topped up so your survivors can react and keep the zombies at bay. Then there's the weapon mods. Here you're going to find some awesome weapon mods that steady your aim, do more damage and increase your chances of survival. Here's another example of the legendary cards. My favourite, the goldfish bomb. In Huntsville you can find things such as the legendary baseball bat that hit the winning home run for the Huntsville Beavers. Let's spend a bit more time going through the weapon cards. And here we've got the number of actions it will take to use the weapon. Then we've got the noise, and in this case the revolver causes a bang. We've got the special abilities and conditions. The range is the distance the weapon can shoot or be used in. The attack characteristic tells us how many dice to roll each time we attack. The power characteristic tells us the number we use to modify the target's armor save result. And then the damage characteristic tells us how many hearts or apples a survivor will lose if they fail an armor save. This here is the carry slot number, it tells us how many carry slots the weapon will take up in the backpack, and then how much ammo we need to cross off each time we spend an action to use the weapon. And finally, there's a picture of the weapon. There we go, that's now covered all the rules for searching. We've looked through the search tables, the items and the cards, and gone through the weapon card in a bit more detail. It would be great if you come and join me for the next part in the series where we look at line of sight and cover, ranged attacks, grenades and fire. Thanks so much for following along with this How to Play Population Z series. There's 10 parts to this all together. This video was part 6. We've still got a few to go and that's going to include those ranged attacks. We're also going to take a look at cover and line of sight, then have a look at melee attacks including combat assists, then have a close look at zombies and how NPCs work before having a look at how to start a campaign and a skirmish overview. And then once we've done that, I'm going to go through a demo game with Nicholas and then you'll see exactly how the game plays out on the table. If you'd like to find out more about the game, you can watch the Pop Z book review where I go through the book in detail, showing you every aspect of it. And then you can also have a look at another video where we go through the Pop Z asset book. This is an optional extra that gives you all those cards and cool tokens for the game. There's links to everything in the description down below. And if you've got any questions you'd like to ask, then please add those in the comments. Join us on Discord or take a look at our social media. That's it for now though, thanks so much for watching this part 6 of the series. Like if you liked it, subscribe for more videos like this one, and I look forward to seeing you here next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me to keep going with these regular videos. I couldn't do this without you, and I appreciate your support so much. If you'd like to join the Patreon community, support the channel, get some great perks at the same time, there's a link down below in the description. It'll be awesome to see you there.